Hello, today we're going to see if it's possible to put a needle and a skewer into a balloon without popping it. All right, so if you're given a balloon and you want to pop it, uh, in the fastest way possible, most people would, would go onto the side. So that's what we're gonna do first, and just verify, of course, these are regular balloons that pop. So one, two, three, and the balloon pops. Very, very, very fast. Here's a balloon popping at 1,400 frames per second. And here it is at about 3,600 frames per second. As we go along here, we'll slow it down more and more. Here it is at almost 6,000 frames per second. Take a look at how the balloon splits apart and then flies into the background. Notice that at the point that the needle hits the rubber, it splits at that point incredibly fast and then blows apart, almost splitting the balloon in half from that point. Here we are at about 10,000 frames per second, and you can see some dust inside of the balloon. It looks like the inside of this balloon is coated with some sort of powder. And here it is at about 20,000 frames per second. Now what's interesting about this is that rubber is like really, really, really strong. So I can pinch it, move it, very, very, very strong. And it's strong like this because the rubber itself is made of what we call a polymer. It's a long chain hydrocarbon of carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms and some other atoms in there, but they're long chains. And they can get curled up and they can be uncurled and they can slide past each other and still be attracted to each other. So that's why it's so flexible like this, but it's very, very strong. But once you put a tiny bit of of a, of a stress point on there, where you can rupture it in one location, then it rips apart incredibly fast, as we saw just a minute ago. You can just sort of see the discoloration of the, uh, of the rubber is a little more dark blue there. So let's see what happens with a needle right here at the end. One, two, three, and, and we go here. Whoa, look, we went right into the end right there. In fact, I can pull it out and it doesn't deflate right away. Let's do it right next door. So you can play this game all day long. As long as you're very careful and you put it in at the end, you can puncture the balloon all day long. Sometimes you can get it to work at this end as well. Notice there's uh, the point at the opposite end there where it's under least amount of tension there as well. Let's try it. Look, it worked perfectly fine just there. So we can, we can get it to go in at the ends here. As soon as we go off, then the balloon pops. Now why is that? When you inflate this thing, the way in which it is constructed is there's maximum tension in the rubber around the midpoint here. And as we go to the one pole of the balloon and the other pole of the balloon, where it's bunched up like this, you can just tell by the way it's bunched up with the wrinkles that there's less tension going on right there. So when you puncture it, it's not wanting to rip apart so much when you puncture it at the ends. So let's increase the size of our puncture device from a needle to something a little bit bigger and see if we can get it to uh, uh, puncture at the end with a bigger object. So here I have these metal skewers. I thought it would be a good intermediate instead of going straight to the wood, we'll use the metal skewers here. And these are uh, smaller diameter than the wood, but also significantly smoother there. Let's see what happens when we try to go uh, into the end here. I found that if you go straight in, often it will pop, but if you go at like an angle and maybe give a little bit of a twisting motion as you do it, just a little bit, you can get it to go in. Let's see uh, if it'll work this time. One, two, three, here we go. A little bit difficult sometimes. There it goes. Okay, now here's the real tricky part. Let's see, it's kind of hard sometimes, Let's see if I can go all the way through to the other side. That's the hard part. We get it to go right over there and see if I can go out the other side. There we go. We have a skewered balloon there, right? Now before we run out of air, notice it's not deflating too much. Why? Because the, the, the pressure and the tension in the rubber is kind of holding it and keeping the holes kind of closed there as long as you do it with a, a, a very narrow object here. So we'll try one more time with this one. We'll see if we can get two of them in there. There we go. We'll come around to the other side. It's kind of fun. We'll try to get it really close. I can feel the air coming out. Ooh, I got two of them. Let's see if I can get three of them before it, before it goes. Eventually it will deflate here. So there's one more right here. I can, you can hear the air coming out. We'll go one more time. There we go, three. Probably as good as I'm gonna get. I'll try one more time. 
And of course it's gonna it's gonna go it's gonna go before I can get there. There we go. Four skewers through a balloon made of metal. So I have this new probe lens, which is a really long lens, about 18 inches long. And I thought it would be cool to see if I could get a shot of that lens inside of the balloon as I try to shove the skewer in from the other side. The first several times I popped the balloon, of course, but after a while of getting the hang of it, I was able to puncture it from looking on the inside of the balloon. So this skewer that you're looking at is coming from the outside in. And once I got the hang of it, I was actually able to puncture it from the outside more than one time. Here's a really cool shot of inserting the skewer multiple times actually right near the end of the balloon. Sometimes it takes a while to get it actually in there and you have to find the right angle to not pop it. But after a while it becomes pretty easy and it's just really cool to do this over and over again. This was nice because these skewers are nice and smooth. When you look at the skewer under a microscope, you'll see that even the smoothest metal that looks so smooth and feels so smooth to our touch is actually very bumpy and rough at the microscopic level. When, when you look at this wood here, um, even the smoothest wood to your touch is very, very rough under a microscope. There's all kinds of dips and valleys and splinters and all kinds of things. So let's see if we can do this with the wood and see how difficult that is. And then we'll move on to actually uh, shooting an arrow through the balloons. All right, here we go. I'm gonna have a few of these ready to go, see how many we can get. It's significantly more difficult with wood. We will see. Hopefully I don't pop it here. One, two, three, twist and go at an angle. Up, oh, pop that one. Often, if you go in an angle, it works a little better. Let's see here. Oh, there it goes. It's inside, that's very cool. Only the second try. All right, so now we'll go to the other end. We'll see if we can get it to come right out the other end. This one's tricky, come on now. Don't let me down. I popped it that time. All right, we'll try one more time. Got it in this side. We'll go all the way through here. Let me try to pinch it and twist it, come on now, there we go. Wow, that's cool. I don't think there's any way I'll be able to get a second one in there, I could try, but uh, I don't think so. Ooh, second one went in, significantly easier when it starts to deflate actually. And it popped a little bit. Here's a close up shot of skewering this balloon with a wooden skewer, and notice that even after we pull it out, it doesn't rip apart because the tension at this part of the balloon is so low. And with some practice, you can skewer it multiple times, even with a wooden skewer. Now try this, grab a small piece of tape and put it on the side of the balloon. And we're just gonna put it right on like that. So you see there's not too many air bubbles. That we just can go in, no popping. You can over and over and over and over again, but there, you finally pop it there. That is a really neat trick. If you put that tape on ahead of time and show somebody, it'll be pretty amazing to most people of popping water balloons at 1500 frames per second. You can just see every droplet of water taking its own trajectory. And just for giggles, let's reverse time and let the water droplets come together opposite of gravity and reform the balloon. I want you to notice how the needle makes it all the way into this balloon before the balloon punctures. And when it does rupture, it rips around the entire circumference, kind of taking water with it and spraying it in all directions as the water then continues under its own inertia falling toward the ground. Now check this out. As we puncture the balloon from the bottom where the tension in the rubber is less, the needle goes all the way in and surprisingly the balloon doesn't rupture at all. In fact, I was quite surprised to pull the needle out and then the balloon just squirted water in a continuous stream and did not rupture. So I then had to go around to the other side of the balloon near the midpoint and then pop it properly from the side. Here it is slowed down a little bit more. This is around 2000 frames per second. And it really allows you to see the trajectory of each individual water droplet just moving almost like its own little universe under the force of gravity. And just because I think it's so cool, here it is sped up a little bit and in reverse order, almost like time is flowing backward. Here's an extreme close-up with a different lens of the puncture itself. And it really allows you just to see the ripples in the water as it almost sits under its own inertia before gravity has a time to take it and pull it down. 
And here's the last slow-mo shot of a balloon popping before we move on to actually trying to shoot arrows into the balloon to see what will happen there. I just can't get over how it looks like a totally different universe of activity and action when you slow time down. Now the first time I shot the balloon, I tried to shoot it at the end, but the arrow itself isn't that sharp. So all that happened is the balloon started jiggling and oscillating and gyrating, which honestly looks kind of incredible. Now I'd like to take us a little closer to the point of impact, and let's really look at how the balloon responds as soon as the arrow hits it and bounces off. You can see from the point of impact that it compresses the rubber, which then bounces back and starts the oscillations. So here is this tiny, tiny little uh, bow and arrow that I bought. It fits in the palm of your hand. It's actually made of metal. It's really durable. It comes with these little arrows, which are kind of a plastic with a, with a metal tip here at the end. And the way you fire it is basically you put it through like this and it catches the, uh, the string in the back and you you pull it and you fire it like that. Now these are pretty kind of sharp, definitely uh, can hurt you, but they're not super, super sharp. So in order to do this, what I've done is I've taken some and I've modified them so that I've put like a, a needle, I basically super glued a needle to the very front of it to try to give it more of a sharp point to give maximum chance of this happening. I don't know if it's possible, we're going to find out. After gluing a needle at the end of the arrowhead, it made a clean insertion point and exit point with an incredible shot of this balloon disintegrating in slow motion. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it to go through the balloon without rupturing. I think the impact is just too violent and always rips the rubber. Here's an incredible shot showing the impact point and we can see the rubber fracture all the way around, rip apart, and then the entire process happens in a fraction of a second. Here I shot it again in a little slower motion of 3,500 frames per second. You can really see the rubber snap at the impact point, dragging the water droplets around with it, flinging them around essentially, and then the bulk of the water in the inside is mostly unchanged and then falls down under gravity. I really hope you've enjoyed this. I started out with a nugget in my brain. Can you shoot a very sharp object all the way through a water balloon? And in a couple of instances, you can see the arrow kind of go into one end and not immediately rupture it. But in all cases, every time I did it, because I actually filmed several more times than what I'm showing you here today, um, every single time, the force of the impact caused the rubber to rip. And so every time it ruptured the balloon. So I couldn't get the arrow to go all the way through without rupturing the balloon. But I still think it was a fun experiment. We learned how to skewer balloons, how to puncture balloons at the end, even water balloons, without them rupturing. And of course, we got some amazing slow-mo footage of shooting a balloon and seeing all the, the bubbles and the ripping and all of that. In most cases, when the balloon is ruptured, the rubber kind of flies around and obviously collapses and then sprays and shoots the water from the edges during the collapsing process. I just found that fascinating to watch. So please, I'd love to know what you think about this. Please drop me a line. Let me know your thoughts and comments. Let me know what you'd like to see me do in the future. Please don't forget to stay curious. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.